Good evening, everyone. Community Hoops and TSB Television proudly continue its coverage of the Richfield Holiday Classic. Today we have the final in the Richfield Holiday Classic. The winner will take home the championship as the Apple Valley Eagles take on the hometown team Richfield Spartans in an attempt to pull off the tournament upset. Apple Valley beat Bloomington Jefferson in their first game to get to this point. Richfield took down Burnsville. I'm Mike Peden here with Minneapolis North head coach Tim Johnson and uh, Richfield, we know how their offense runs and it's primarily through Jessica January. Yeah, Richfield uh, uh, hasn't changed much as far as their style of play over the last couple of years. They're going to they're going to run the ball through January. They're going to look to put the full court pressure on Anya, create some chaos, and uh, look to get some steals and score some transition baskets. And for Apple Valley, a team that pulled off the upset, how do they carry that and uh, try to finish it against a very athletic Richfield team? Well, that'll be interesting, Mike, uh, to see if uh, the high and emotions that they had from uh, coming back and winning that game yesterday against Jefferson will carry on the floor uh, and help them uh, in this game this evening, or if there'll be a little bit of an emotional letdown from uh, working that hard to come back. We'll see what happens, although I did speak with the Apple Valley coaching staff just before the game, and they said the one thing about this team that might get overlooked is they never give up. And a situation like they were in yesterday, they might have uh, packed it up and said, oh, screw it, we'll go to the next game. Not Apple Valley. No, you didn't see that, and that's one of the reasons they came back and won that game last night, uh, is their kids played hard, continued to play hard, and uh, worked their way back into the game, and they gave themselves a chance to win. So let's take a look at the keys to the game quickly. For Richfield, they'll want to run the ball, play defense, and make their free throws when you're an athletic team. Those three things will work in your favor. And for Apple Valley, they'll want to contain Jessica January and Hannah Wise, who provide the bulk of the scoring, and then handle that Richfield pressure, which is a byproduct of their athleticism. So here are the starting lineups. We'll start with the visiting Apple Valley Eagles. It's Jordan Sammons, number 13, at guard. Jaron Pipkins, number 20, at guard. Cindy Schalk, number 21, at guard. Katie Erb, number 30, at forward. And Destiny Scott, number 32, at forward. Sammons, the team's leading scorer at 17.4 points per game. She had a big game yesterday, along with Destiny Scott, to get Apple Valley that upset win. Richfield, their starting five is Jessica January, number 14, at guard. Number 23, Haley Lindblom, at guard. Number 25, Brienne Guyton, at center. Number 33, Katie Anderson, also listed at center. And number 35, Anna Wise, listed at guard. Jessica January, averaging 28.8 points per game. That includes last night's 27 point performance in the win over Burnsville. She leads the state in scoring. She's four points ahead of second place in the scoring title race, and that's Kaylani Edwards. And if you want to get a sense of how well she has done on offense, the lowest point total she's had in a game this season was 24 in a win over Highland Park. Well, and last night was a perfect example. She started out slow, and we had uh, talked about how she was having an off night, and she ended up finishing with 27 points. Not too bad if uh, you're having an off night, Mike. And as you pointed out, for most players, uh, 27 points would be a dream. And for us to call an 27 points an off night for Jessica January just says something about her offensive production. Absolutely. And that 24 points over Highland Park was a 51-35 win, so... Uh, even when Richfield doesn't run up the scoreboard, Jessica finds a way to put points on the board. Richfield worrying Maroon, and here's that athleticism we're talking about as they get the first possession, and Apple Valley worrying their white jerseys. Apple Valley coming into this game at 2-5, and five, Richfield at 5-0. and oh. And as quick and as athletic they are, we see that they're taking their time, showing a little patience on this first possession. Let's 
Jessica January, of course, the younger sister of Pamela January, who is off playing Division I college basketball. And the first basket of the game is scored by Katie Anderson on a layup. The Apple Valley girls program, I asked the coaching staff as they lose the ball to January, what is something that you might miss because you know they might get overshadowed with the boys soccer program being as strong as they are and the boys basketball program as Sammons picks up the steal and the breakaway. Well, there's one thing you might miss if you just read the papers. You know, because they get a lot of the press, you know, what is something that uh, you won't see from Apple Valley just by reading the paper, and they told me it's just how well they come together. Everyone supports each other, there are no clicks. Well, you saw that last night. Uh, you're not going to come back from a uh, 12, uh, 15, 16 point deficit like they did last night unless you've got uh, good teamwork and that you can believe in each other and rely on each other. We saw that uh, out of Apple Valley last night. January was fouled by Sammons, and she's going to the line. Well, it doesn't take her long to get her first point here. It took her a while to get going on offense yesterday, but as we pointed out, she put up 27 points. And she starts the game with two. And uh, off that Apple Valley point you mentioned, uh, the coaching staff, they tell their kids every night as Jordan Sammons picks up another layup. The only point that you want to leave the game is the end, as January gets the bounce. It doesn't matter if you're trailing at halftime, if you're trailing to start the second half, as long as you're leading when the clock hits zero and ends the game. That is uh, who determines winning and losing. <laughs> that hasn't changed. 6-4, <laughs> Richfield up early, 15-55 remaining in the first half. Sammons with all four of Apple Valley's points, but there's Destiny Scott who picked up 18 in their win over Jefferson, and she averages 13.9, so she is a player you gotta keep an eye on as well as Sammons. Well, Scott played a great game last night uh, with not only with her 18 points, but she really created a lot of opportunities for, your, for her teammates uh, uh, and put a lot of focus uh, with the defensive pressure they had to do to try to stop her. Scott working off the screen, can't make it work, air balls the shot. But it was touched by a Richfield player, so the Eagles catch a break. Apple Valley, of course, in the South Suburban Conference saw two of their fellow members in action in the third place game, and Richfield, a member of the Classic Lake, they will start conference play next week when they head to Simley. And you mentioned this yesterday, uh, Richfield, a small town in the big city, playing in the old Minnesota Conference with folks like Hutchinson and Shakopee and New Prague. And even though they got moved to South Suburban as Destiny Scott picks up another, her first basket in Apple Valley, all three of their baskets are in the paint. So finish up that point about Richfield, uh, they got moved to Classic Suburban. They still have to travel a bit on road trips, but not quite as far as they did when they had to travel to Hutchinson and Shakopee. No, there definitely was some driving with, uh, with, with uh, being in the Minnesota Conference. Uh, as you know, Mike, I was out here for 17 years, and uh, uh, we were actually in several different conferences, from the Lake Conference to the Classic Lake to the Minnesota, uh, and now where Richfield is now back into the Classic Suburban. Jordan Sammons picks up her second foul and she's gonna sit. Laurel Cabot steps in. You must have had quite a few bonding moments back in the day with all those road trips. Well, certainly it seemed <laughs> that uh, every time we went out to, uh, to Hutchinson or Red Wing, it was uh, the day of a snowstorm or a virtual blizzard. It's funny how that always seemed to work out. Well, no snowstorm or blizzard to worry about as Hannah Wise found January inside for the layup and we were gonna have a blocking foul on Sierra Ford Washington. So get this, January who struggled to get her first basket in the first game before she found her stroke already has six points. Cabot finds Shock and Shock buries the three. 
And that gives Apple Valley their first lead. Took Apple Valley a while to get the lead against Jefferson in their game yesterday. Sierra Ford Washington inside off the feed from Anderson. And for the most part, both teams preferring to attack the paint. Scott for three. Off the rim. Pipkins draws the foul, and she'll get two. Two free throws, that is. Pipkins no slots on offense either, averaging 10.2 points per contest coming into this game. Now you talked about uh, trying not to have too much of a letdown, and so how does Apple Valley uh, keep their composure after getting that big win against Jefferson yesterday? Well, I think you're seeing that uh, at this point already in the game that uh, there hasn't been any letdown. They've came out and played the same way we've seen them play in the second half uh, of last night's ball game, uh, moving the ball well, playing uh, good, solid, uh, fundamental defense, and uh, making the extra pass when they need to. January missed the shot. Guyton got the rebound and draw the foul. It's against Schalk. Guyton had a solid game yesterday in Richfield's win over Burnsville. She averages 7.8 points per game. Bricks both free throws, and so we're tied at 10. Scott was looking for Pipkins, but Anderson was there for the steal, and January will bring the ball up court, as she's done many times for the Spartans in the early going of the season. Wise inside. Finds Anderson out to January. Now back to Wise. She has long distance, but she can get the banks as well. That's her first field goal. There's Cabot out to Scott. And you see Apple Valley not buckling with the lack of Sammons on the floor. Wise with the steal, picking off Schalk's pass, one-on-one -on -one with Schalk. And Schalk fouls Wise, which means two free throws for Hannah, who, whose grandmother, as uh, told by Richfield head coach Ann Wise, listens to everything when Richfield is on a broadcast, so I've got to be careful with what I say tonight. Certainly it's nice to know that they've got the support of their family. <laughs> well, we, while we're at this moment, we'd like to say hello to her grandmother and any of her relatives that might be watching. And if anyone else's relatives, parents, siblings are watching, uh, thank you for tuning in. We certainly appreciate your support. Well, Hannah, go ahead. Hannah played a nice game last night, too, and that was definitely uh, one of the keys in the, the victory they got, especially with the points she scored in the first half, why uh, January was, as again we talked, slightly off on only a 27-point night. Not many players can be slightly off and score 27. Scott stepped on the line, so an Apple Valley turnover will give Richfield a chance to increase that lead of four points. Ford Washington looking for Anderson. Tied up. Possession arrow points to Apple Valley. Melissa Swanson was in a little bit of trouble, but found Cabot. Scott for three. Off to the right, and it will run out of bounds.
Scott hasn't found her three-point shot yet, but she came up big, especially in that second half with uh, Jefferson. Yeah, she was definitely one of the keys uh, of their comeback win last night. Uh. And then Jordan Sammons picked it up from there. Guyton goes inside and is short, but gets her own rebound and cleans up her own mess. You always love to see that out of your post players. That was a good move by Guyton. She played a great game last night. Uh. Yeah, there aren't too many players on the floor for either team that had an off game last night. They all came up big, and so it's going to come down to who can come up big this time as the ball almost sails up here, and another Apple Valley turnover. Richfield on a little run here. Wise to Guyton. Apple Valley continuing their man. Guyton again follows her own shot and gets another possession for Richfield. And Jessica January makes the most out of it. Eight points for the state's leading score. This Apple Valley team, uh, we talked about everyone's together and all supportive. Uh, as, uh, they were getting their photographs for the starting lineups. Uh, a few of them all turned out as we got a timeout call by Jeremy Gordon. They all turned their backs so that they wouldn't cause their uh, teammate to flinch <laughs> while their photograph was being taken. <laughs> Only in high school will you find that. Yeah, you don't find that too many other places else. And, and covering high school basketball as long as I have, you really get to see the camaraderie, especially from some of the top teams who you know rack up all these wins. They do a lot of uh, silly things that just make you <laughs> crack up. Lakeville North um, did some silly dances last season. You know, Apple Valley, they all turned their backs. And it sounds like uh, you had some stories from your days here at Richfield. Well, like I say, if, you're gonna, if, you, if you have a good team, your, your, your players and your kids usually get along. Along with each with each other, I know one of the years that I was out here, uh, you know, the kids kind of modeled themselves after the Hoosiers. They thought that was kind of a funny deal, and watched the movie and talked about that uh, throughout the season. Like I say, anything that's going to get your team to have good team unity is going to carry a long way. And Ridgefield, kind of like a Hoosiers inside, in, uh, just outside Minneapolis, as Herb cleans up the missed shot from Sammons. Well, they're just outside Minneapolis, but. The city is only five square miles long, at least from what I've heard. Traveling violation on Guyton. And when you look at the gym and you see a school like Richfield, then you come to a gym like this, you want, it does bring a small town feel to it. Yeah, Richfield definitely has a small town environment uh, within a big city. Cabot loses the ball to January. She finds Wise, who goes back to January. Look at that give and go. You can see why she's averaging 29 points a game, Mike. She's already at 10. <clears throat> and she will be called for the foul as Sammons drew it. And you don't see January taking too many uh, breathers either on the bench. She goes out and she plays almost every minute. But when you are good at the sport and when you love it, uh, the last thing you want to do is sit out. No, you want to play. And Swanson wants to play, and she gets the three. And as dominant as January has been early, Apple Valley still in this 2015. Wanger and back in. For the Spartans, that's actually her first action on the floor. She misses the long range two. Rebound Sammons. Look for Pipkins, too strong. She finds Swanson and now Sammons, top of the key, short. Cabot with the rebound, but she's in the corner. Not much she could do there. 
January is stripped by Herb. Now Pipkins going to Herb and Apple Valley will reset. January with the steal. Now she has one on one. Goes right and finishes against Sammons. That's good composure by January to make that jump shot, make, make sure she's able to make, uh, make the layup. And we talked about this yesterday, worth reiterating as Pipkins gets the response. January just a sophomore, and she's doing things that you might see out of seniors. Well, of course, uh, some people tend to forget, uh, you know, why she is only a sophomore. She's been playing varsity basketball since uh, she was in seventh grade, so she's a very experienced uh, player uh, with, a, with a long future in front of her. Cabot can't get the bounce. And it will go to Richfield. 22-17. Apple Valley still not out of this. They've been finding a way to respond. And that last basket by January was created just because, you know, she made a mistake, didn't make a big deal about it, just focused on the next play, and it paid off. Well, that's the key is to be successful if you can take it one play at a time. And that's one of the hardest things from a coaching standpoint uh, to get your players to understand. But uh, good teams and good players uh, tend to figure that out. Uh, and, and they can see why they're able to do the things they can do. January stops, pops, and gets the mid-range J. And she only has, what, 14 points? Yeah, I think she heard us talking about her last uh, first half of last game about being a little sluggish out of the gate. <laughs> Apple Valley ball, 6.35 remaining in the first half. As Wangerin and Guyton will take a breather. Sammons draws the foul. And about mistakes, it's something that you know even the best teams are going to make. Now as a coach, you may as well tell your roster, mistakes are inevitable. You're going to commit them no matter how hard you try to avoid them. It's how you respond after a mistake that defines your character. Well, that's, that's true in basketball as well as life. I mean, and that's one of the things you try to teach your players that uh, mistakes happen, you try to fix them, you try to correct them. Uh, but uh, life goes on, the play goes on, and, you, and it's what you can do after that. Sammons uses up her dribble. Can't get the shot down, but Swanson is there for the cleanup. Swanson doing a solid job off the bench. She has five points, and Apple Valley going tit for tat with Richfield. And the longer they do this, the more confidence they'll get. January draws a foul, and two more free throws are coming. And as much as we've talked about January's point production, you know, as a sophomore, she's also a very bright student. Number two in her class right now in class GPA. While there's still a few semesters left and a few more grades to be factored in, uh, I don't think there's any question that January's brains are any less than her uh, brains on the court. No, and that's one of the nice things to see. I mean, and, and sometimes people forget that about not only January, but any of the players out there. I mean, they're student athletes, and it's nice to see that uh, they can excel not only on the basketball court, but in the classroom. And they can also excel at cleaning up their own mess, too, as January did off the steal, getting a rebound and the basket. And Scott with the three pointer as the response. Just when you think Richfield's about to go on a run, Apple Valley is there saying, Don't forget about us for three, no good. Rebound Swanson. That was Limblum on the three point attempt. Apple Valley with a chance to make this a one possession game. Sammons can't do it. And a foul on Apple Valley. That will be their last to give with 5.02 remaining in the first half. I spoke with the Apple Valley coaching staff and they said it may as well be a version of the Jordan rule, you know, maybe giving January her points but limiting her support options. 
and it was uh, January support options that came up big in their win over Jefferson. Yeah, they were the difference the last night, but uh, as you can see by the scoring, I think uh, that is a strategy they've been using because outside of January 17, uh, the rest of the Richfield starters uh, have only been in the two, three, four point uh, scoring margin. January with 17, the rest of the team with 10. But when you have Wise, I'm sure things will even out eventually. January with the steal, and here's two points going Lindblom's way. This will be her first field goal. For three, that's Salmon's bullseye. Both teams showing up tonight. Guyton almost loses it. And a jam in the corner forces a Richfield turnover. Too many players trying to help out there. Yeah, they just ran out of room on the floor. Well, there's no question about uh, the unselfishness of Richfield. In fact, it might have been a little too unselfish there. Sammons feeds out to Pipkins, but she can't finish. And that's Dagan. She can't get the bounce. Pipkins with the rebound. No cleanup. And it will stay with Apple Valley. And Apple Valley finally getting a chance to see what their team can do when at full strength. And when they're at full strength, they're just as dangerous as any of the top South Suburban foes. Lindblom gets the steal, looking for Wise. But Swanson deflects it and Sammons picks it up. And Scott with the bounce. Off the glass, that is. And we've got a timeout called by Leanne Wise of Richfield with 3.10 in the first. Scott now at seven, that ties Sammons for the team lead. And Apple Valley just doing it by spreading the ball. Hey, if you look at the score, Mike, I mean, they've got balanced scoring across the board. And, uh, you know, you got to give Apple Valley a lot of credit because they've came out with the same intensity level we saw them come out with uh, at the end of the first half last night and carry through the second half. Uh, they're playing hard. They're getting up and down on the floor, and uh, they're balancing the score. Scott's been the key to distributing the ball, but uh, all of their players have stepped up so far to uh, make this the ball game it is. And neither team really getting much distance on each other. The largest lead of the game was six by Ridgefield. But really, it's tit for tat, pound for pound, one basket here, one basket there, and we're just seeing both teams coming out and treating this like a state tournament final game. Well, and I think you're seeing the type of game that you'd like to see in a holiday tournament final, that you've got two teams that are competing well against each other. Uh, both, both, are, both are playing playing up to the level they're capable of. Because uh, again, you're, you're competing for, for a tournament trophy and at this point in the season, that's, that's a big deal for any program. The one thing that might affect Richfield later in the season is their lack of size. They don't have any players above five foot ten, and that's Guyton in the post. But the play from January and Wise seems to more than make up for it. Guyton spins around, can't get the basket. But Anderson's there and she draws the foul. It will go against Dagan. Well, we've seen that in that uh, in the tournament uh, from a couple different teams. I mean, we saw that uh, earlier tonight with Jefferson where they didn't have really any dominant post, uh, but uh, they had multiple players on the floor that could score. You've seen that from Richfield. You know you've got January who's gonna score her 20 plus points a game. Uh, but as we saw last night and we're seeing it here, here tonight, uh, there's other players from Richfield who can, who can make baskets and score uh, when they need to. Anderson gets the back end. That will give her three. 
And that gives Richfield a three-point lead. Apple Valley will make it one as Pipkins was open in the back door. They have yet to lead by more than one. Apple Valley did hold the lead briefly before Richfield came back and January draws the foul. Apple Valley in the penalty. The foul is against Scott, that's her first. And this is a chance for Richfield to keep the distance. Well, Jessica got a lot of looks last night from Division I college scouts, including Curtis Lloyd, the assistant coach for the Gopher women's basketball team. Sammons was looking for a target inside, and it will stay Apple Valley Ball with 2.30 left. So we'd like to thank the Rotary Club of Richfield and Richfield Bloomington Credit Union for sponsoring the Richfield Holiday Classic, and we'd like to thank GrandStadium.tv for providing an outlet to webcast all these games for you. Swanson for three. Short, rebound Guyton. Cross-court pass to Wise. Was looking for Guyton, or Lindblom, and it's off Pipkin, so Richfield keeps possession. They're up by two. And as we get close to ending the first half here, there really isn't much I'd say to either team as what you need to work on. They're both uh, executing well in terms of what they want to do. No, I think you've seen both groups come out tonight doing the things that they want to both do offensively. Swanson, count it. The both teams are forcing steals. You know, with Richfield, maybe you want to spread the scoring out a little bit, but really, there isn't any complaints I'd have watching this first half. This is just good old-fashioned basketball. No, and for as far as Richfield goes, like I say, if you look at the, the box scores and the stats, they're kind of on pace to, with the type of game that they normally have as far as January leading the scoring. And uh, with the exception of, uh, of Wise, most of the rest of the girls contribute the points that they need to in the key situations. January contributes two more, giving Richfield a two-point lead again. Uh, January, he only has 20. Sammons finds Pipkins again. And for the second time, Pipkins, Pipkins makes the back door work. We're tied again at 33. I'm really impressed so far with the way Apple Valley has uh, broken the Richfield press. That's usually the key piece uh, uh, that Richfield relies on to give people trouble. We saw that last night in their win against Burnsville that the press really confused them. Uh, and you're seeing uh, Apple Valley tonight uh, handle that well, but that's one of the things that you would hope to see in a holiday tournament. Uh, most teams are here watching each other play, so you've got a good chance to see what uh, both groups can do, and uh, coaches make some adjustments as well as players make some adjustments. Limbalum got called for the traveling violation, so Apple Valley has a chance to take the lead for the first time since early in this half. We're approaching the final minute but I don't think either team's gonna hang on to the ball. And a foul on Apple Valley. It will be charged against Scott. It's an offensive foul, so no free throws, even though Richfield is in the bonus. Well, well the game has been pretty flawless up until this point. Uh, of course, Mike, we started talking about that. Now the last minute or so has been a little sloppy on both ends. <laughs> well, ironically, we're at the same score that Apple Valley was at with Jefferson at the end of the first half in last game. And that's after Jefferson came, or Apple Valley came back after they trailed early. Guyton couldn't get the shot down. Here comes Sammons. Finding Swanson for the lead. No good. And a rebound by Guyton. 32 seconds. January trying to fight off Sammons. Finds Limblum in the corner. Wise nearly loses it. Finds Anderson inside, and it's not much Apple Valley could do there. Trying to follow that steal, and that pursuit cost them, but again, you can't complain about that. Five seconds. Scott, she had a three to end the first half last time, and she won't do it this time, but Apple Valley still very much in this. 
as we head to the locker room with a 35-33 lead for Richfield. And just the sense that both teams are coming out to play. No, this is the kind of game you want to see uh, from a fan's standpoint and from a coaching standpoint. Both groups got to be happy with the way they've played. Uh, you know, again, this is this is for a tournament championship, uh, and you want to see Ari Kins respond. Both groups have responded the way I would think uh, each coach uh, was looking for their players to do. So we'll come back with a first half analysis and in-game box score, and but for now we'll take a break, and we'll see you in a few minutes. And we welcome you back to Richfield High School as Community Hoops and TSB Television continue its coverage of the Richfield Holiday Classic. We have the championship game between Richfield and Apple Valley. I'm Mike Keaton here with Minneapolis North head coach Tim Johnson, and he'll join me in a second. But let's take a look at the in-game box score. And for Richfield, we talked about Pamela January. She has 20 points, leads all players. For most pl players, that'd be a good total for the entire game. Hannah Wise has four. You also have Katie Anderson with five. And then Sierra Ford Washington and Brianne Guyton have two. For Apple Valley, it's seven, 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 and seven. Four players are tied for the team lead in scoring with seven points, and they include Sammons, Pipkins, Scott, and then Schalk has three. Well, Mike, you couldn't ask for a, for, for a better uh, better game for a championship final, and uh, I think I'm looking forward to uh, a good second half by both teams. I know I'm included in that party, and if you want to join the party and buy a DVD copy of this game, just click the Purchase DVD link at the top of the page. You can also send us your feedback by clicking Support Suggestions. We do read your comments and your thoughts, so, and they are taken into consideration. So don't be afraid to send us your thoughts. Richfield wearing maroon, Apple Valley wearing white. And really, both teams play their style of ball. Now it's going to be a key to see which team can prevent the other team from executing on offense. Well, that's going to be the keys, Mike. And we'll see if Richfield's support options can come up big. January has 20 points, but it's going to take some help from her teammates if Richfield wants to pull out. January just put on a clinic in the first half. Really the only blemish you can point to was uh, missing a couple free throws. Nearly loses the ball and she does the splits and hangs on. <laughs> She's a truck. She could be on the gymnastics team. Well she is a multiple sport athlete Mike other than uh, just basketball. Uh, she's one of the top uh, runners in track in, uh, in the state of Minnesota as well so and Brianne Guyton showing some of her athleticism, and that was perhaps Richfield's ugliest possession on offense, and Guyton finds a way to get the end one. It wasn't pretty, but points are points. Points are points, and those are one of those plays that should probably be, uh, the, from the Richfield standpoint, they'll be talking about that later this year at their banquet. Remember <laughs> the play when uh, I did the splits, and then I passed it to you, and you scored. You couldn't even draw one up like that if you tried. Yeah, you can't script that stuff in a movie and make it look as good as that play. <laughs> Guyton completes a three-point play, and that gives her five, and then another assist from January. Sammons is open, buries the three. That gives her ten. There's Sierra Ford Washington out on the floor in place of Lindblom who started earlier. In January now slowing things down a bit. Taking out her mouth guard to call out the play and that's just the great patience you see from Richfield. They can run 
slow, they can run fast, they can run multiple speeds. Guyton can't get the bounce, but she gets her own rebound. Ford Washington out to Anderson, are you kidding me? <laughs> Turns another nearly broken play into a basket. I'll tell you this, Richfield should, uh, they should go for the one-act team or something. They're doing a great job of ad-libbing these last couple possessions. Well, that says a lot for, for their team and, uh, and the way they've been coached that they handle themselves with composure in uh, situations where there's a lot of chaos on the floor. And out of that chaos, Anderson completes a three-point play. She has eight. Sammons from the corner. Bullseye! 13 for number 13. And once again, Apple Valley not going away. January feeds to Ford Washington and fakes the three and picks up the assist. And I've always said in basketball, assists are just as good as points, even if they're not counted as such. January almost got the steal, but he stepped on the line and the official has to brace himself for dear life. <laughs> Even the officials are uh, getting a taste of the chaos that has erupted in these last couple possessions. Well, both teams are playing hard, uh, and, and you're going to see that out of both groups. And not much room for that side official either, with the bleachers going right out to the out-of-bounds line. Scott for three. Off the mark. And Schulk can't save it. Well, and, you know, that's one of the things that's actually kind of fun about high school sports is... Uh, uh, the fans got an opportunity to sit uh, right on the floor uh, and be in the play themselves. And th that doesn't go without saying there are some pretty big gyms. I covered the Breakdown Sports USA Tip-Off Classic over at Hopkins, and they have a nice facility. I'm going to be covering a game at Mounds Park Academy later. They have a really nice facility with the Lansing Sports Center at Greeton Durham Hall. Has a gym that rivals the size of some of the smaller colleges around here. Wise with the switch. Yeah, all three of those places are fantastic, Mike. Uh, we were just out at Hopkins uh, from Minneapolis North uh, a couple weeks back, and of course, uh, Mounds Park when I was at St. Burns, we played there regularly. It's one of the nicest uh, complexes uh, within the state of Minnesota. Wise with six. If Scott could find her stroke, Pipkins missed the shot from the three-point line. That might be Apple Valley's chance to overcome their deficit with Richfield, although it hasn't been much. Guyton is stripped by Scott, speaking of her. And she has numbers, goes to Schalk, and Schalk makes it work from the left side. She has five. You know, Scott does a really nice job uh, in transition looking up the floor, not only to see if she's got her opportunity, but that's uh, one of several nice assists uh, that she's had for her teammates. Wise going to January. January has not scored yet in this half. But we know she can turn it on. Loses it to Scott. And she finds Salmon's open down court. And she makes it a two point game. Another quick run by Richfield and another quick response from Apple Valley. Ford Washington to Anderson to Wise for three. Yes! That gives her nine. Wise now close to her average of 10.8. And I'm sure her grandmother is liking every minute of this. There's Herb. She has two. All of Apple Valley's starters have scored. Schalk for three. She gets the answer! It's been tit for tat all game. January draws the foul. Twelve forty nine remaining in the first half. We'd like to again thank the Rotary Club of Richfield and Richfield Bloomington Credit Union for sponsoring the Richfield Holiday Classic as January 
Goes to the line to try to get her first point of the second half. And she gets her first there. Richfield, and now again 5-0. and They had a lot of time off coming into this holiday tournament, and that's why uh, January's numbers weren't on the list of scoring top scorers until yesterday's game, but uh, they'll catch up as they now get to play the classic suburban foes. Guyton with the steal. Hill Murray, of course, the big team to watch for there. January, one-on-one, -on -one, gets the layup. Well, going after going the first five minutes without a basket, she now has four quick points in the second half. She's up to 24. Well, with January, the only thing that makes her so dangerous is her not only her ability to play defense, but uh, to, to make that short jumper or take the ball to the basket. Uh, she's really improved her game over the last year or so. Uh, and that's one of the reasons she's scoring the points she has been scoring. Scott missed the shot, and Guyton had the rebound. And as we mentioned in the open, January's lowest point total this season was 24, and Anderson finds herself open out of a pass that was a little high. And Ridgefield with their largest lead of the game. Anderson now is 10. Schalk trips up, can't get it out. And Ford Washington is on a one-on-one -on -one with Sammons. Anderson is tripped, and Sammons will get called for the foul. A very aggressive, very physical game from both teams, and you got to love it. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, right now, you're kind of seeing Apple Valley get a little out of sync, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they get a timeout here shortly to try to gather things back in sync. Well, they're sending in some reserves now. There's Dagan, Swanson. Herb's going back in. Swanson, of course, had a pretty solid first half coming off the bench. And that was now ruled a non-shooting foul. So no free throws, although Apple Valley already has four team fouls. Richfield has yet to commit a foul in this half. So January has already matched what would be her lowest point total in a game this season. So she, in her first six games, if you told me she would not score less than 24 points in a game, I'd say that's a stretch. Anderson adds two more. She has half of January's total. And this is a player that was averaging just 4.8 a game. There's Cabot. Sammons, long three, missed. Rebound Guyton. January, finds Ford Washington, and she gets the short range shot, and here's that timeout by Jeremy Gordon. Now Apple Valley down by 12, with 10.36 to go in the game. But we saw this in their game with Jefferson yesterday. They went down by 12, and they found a way to come back, and the way I've seen Apple Valley play, I smell another run coming. Well, you yeah, know, from what we've talked about, Tampa Valley's not going to stop and not going to back down. They're going to continue to uh, keep chipping away at the leads. We saw that last night. Uh, the one thing that they've got to be careful with uh, is uh, it gets a little tougher doing that two nights in a row and even more tougher when you're doing it uh, on somebody else's home floor. Uh, but I don't expect uh, Apple Valley to do anything less but make that run. Uh, we've seen that. Uh, they get Scott back here in the ball game. I'm sure they'll all uh, have a couple opportunities here in the last 10-12 uh, minutes of this ball game. And I spoke with the coaching staff and that game yesterday just highlighted uh, in the South Suburban and even outside the conference you can never take a night off. Every team always has a chance of taking home a victory and Apple Valley of course will come at you in ways as, as they have done for the first half of this game and for all of their game with Jefferson and I got an update over from Hopkins. Osseo up by double digits against the top team in Class 4A. And Osseo no slouch either. Over at the Hopkins Holiday Tournament, you can catch those games, of course, on GrandStadium.tv just by clicking the Search Archive link. No, Osseo's done a nice job this year, Mike. We got to see them uh, at the Pat Patterson Tournament over at Hamlin uh, this year, and uh, that would be a fun game over there to watch.
Apple Valley overthrow the inbounds pass, but when you inbound, you can go behind the half court line. So no turnover. Dagan, too high. Almost loses it. Or about to cab it. Long two. Swish. And Apple Valley stops the run. See Richfield slowing things down again, just that ability to change tempos instantly. Guyton going for it, short. January nearly had the rebound, and Fort Washington's there. Lynn Blum, too strong, and it's picked up by Swanson. Now she's in trouble. Salmons for three, and that's off target. But Dagan with the save. Going to Herb, and Herb will get free throws. 9-11 in the second half. Herb averaging 6.3 points per game coming into this game. That gives her her third. And Guyton will step out. Wise will come in. And Apple Valley cutting a 12-point margin to eight. And they're a couple baskets away from putting the pressure on Richfield again. January with the player in her face, can't get it. Rebound Dagan. January hasn't missed too many shots, has she? No, she hasn't. Uh, and Dagan's done a nice board job for Apple Valley controlling those rebounds and not letting Richfield have uh, uh, several second opportunities. Out of bounds, Richfield ball after Swanson missed the long bunny. Wangerin stepping in. She'll give. Lindblom a breather. Wise thought about a three. Now January on the inside option, and again, can't get it. Getting contestant shots now. Salmon stops, pops, short. January fights for the rebound. And draws the foul on Salmons. Almost tackled her in the process too. Maybe she could play in the football team. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to make up for the fact that she can't watch the Vikings play tonight. That's true, we are missing <laughs> the Vikings night. Well, that doesn't make their game any more meaningful, but hey, there's a lot of Vikings fans around here. January, inside, can't finish. She's missed her last three shots. And a foul. It's gonna go against Anderson. So January, getting a little cold from the floor as of late. Stay Apple Valley ball. Ford Washington with the steal. One on one with Dagan. And the charge is called. Dagan got herself set in time. 
No layup and a huge boost of enthusiasm for Apple Valley, much to the dismay of the partisan Richfield crowd. That might be the break that Apple Valley is looking for to kind of spin this thing back uh, in their favor. That's Ford Washington's third. She's staying in the game. Apple Valley's had some chances. The score's been stuck at 58-50 for a while. Scott back in for the Eagles. Pipkins, short, and January wrestles for the rebound. There's that 10 second rule. He's gotta get across that half court line in time. This could be a nail biter to the finish. January feeds to Guyton. Well, when you can't get baskets, you can still get assists. Sammons draws a foul against January. And that will be her third. January is wondering, how did I get called for that? And so that's going to be another thing to keep an eye on. January, only with two fouls left before she's disqualified. Not a player you're going to take out. No, you're not going to take her out of the game, Mike. And I'm sure she's been in this situation uh, before. And uh, like I said, for only a sophomore, she handles herself with a ton of composure. I'm sure she'll be just fine. And that with 6.37 left, we'll like to remind you that at the end of this game, we will do our best to get interviews with players of the game from both teams, Apple Valley and Richfield. And so that's uh, something to look forward to after the conclusion of this game. And if this keeps up, uh, we might have time to get home uh, before the new year. Sammons made one of two, so it's a nine-point margin in favor of Richfield. January again, but Guyton can't finish this time. It will stay with Richfield. Well, for as many points as January has scored, it's nice to see that she can pass the ball just as well. Yeah, she's done a nice job of that tonight, but again, she's not a very selfish player, even though she's leading the state in scoring. Uh, she's not selfish. <laughs> and there's another <laughs> simple little three. Just as you say that, she throws up a three and puts it in. Scott, no. Rebound, wise. That last three for January, by the way, gives her 27, which I believe matched her total from last night. Yeah, she had 27. In what night. we call the off night? On the off night. <laughs> Leanne Wise calls timeout with 5.47 left, and this is a key timeout here with Richfield up by 12 and a chance to put this game away. But even if Richfield hangs on and wins this, you like the fight coming out of Apple Valley, which just tells you that their record is not indicative of how challenging they will be for South Suburban opponents. Well, and we, and we know the strength of that conference. We've talked about that, uh, as well as what they have from a non-conference schedule. Uh, if you're playing the top teams in the state in, that, in, in, in their conference, uh, your schedule's not always going to be, or your record is not always going to be indication of what, uh, what your talent level is. And we saw that out of Apple Valley last night. We're seeing that again tonight. Wise inbound. We know Richfield can run at several tempos. And the half court violation rule is called, or back court violation rule, as it went off of Anderson, who is number one in her senior class in GPA. So it's nice to see that she's setting herself up well for what I'm sure will be a fabulous collegiate career for her, whether she plays in basketball or another sport, or just simply decides to hit the books. Well, you know, Richfield's, uh, you know, had a long tradition of uh, academic excellence as well as uh, doing the things on the floor. Uh, when we were here, I know we were uh, academic uh, 
section champions uh, five or six times uh, in the 13 years I was here with the girls program. So you know that's that's something that the coaches emphasize. They always have here something that the school emphasizes. And it's uh, like I said, that's uh, success carries over not only on the court but in the classroom. And a big hit for Richfield. Wise got the foul on Sammons, and that is her fifth. She is done. Apple Valley now out of fouls to give. So Sammons will go to the bench with 16 points. And 4.46 remaining. That could be a huge dagger for Apple Valley's chances to upset. And in her place is Katie Erb. And we haven't seen much out of Scott tonight. She just hasn't found her shot. January inside. And she makes a tough layup work nine times out of ten. That gives her 29. Scott for three. Still can't find it. And Guyton with the rebound. Apple Valley starting to feel the pressure. Yeah, Richfield starting to extend that lead, so you're going to need to see Apple Valley kind of increase their defensive pressure just like they did last night. Guyton, no. And an over the back call against Richfield. On Guyton, that's her second. No player in serious foul trouble for Richfield. Well, Mike, you can certainly tell we're at a holiday tournament. Uh, if you look around the stands, I see a, uh, a little girl with a Santa Claus hat, hat on. Uh, kind of one of the things you'd only see at a holiday tournament. And it's three days after Christmas. Pipkins with the swish that finally breaks Apple Valley's scoring drought. But they have a lot of work to do if they're going to put a little more pressure on Richfield and you still got to deal with January. They could theoretically hold the ball for the last three minutes and 38 seconds and run out the clock, but I don't see Richfield doing that. Maybe for a couple minutes, but they're gonna try to get that basket, make it that much harder for Apple Valley to mount a comeback here. And Scott fouls January, and that puts Richfield in the bonus. Apple Valley feeling the pressure a bit, maybe thinking we have to uh, stop the clock. Well, like I say, as this lead sort of expands, uh, you know, they're going to have to put some pressure out there, go try to get some steals, create some turnovers, uh, and get themselves back into this. It's a 12-point lead again. And January now breaks the 30-point mark. There's no question that she's the player of the game for Richfield, regardless of the outcome. Absolutely. And it's not just because of her points. I mean, she's done a great job at feeding the ball to her teammates, getting a, quite a few assists to that mark. So she may have scored 30, but she's responsible for creating a few more. Swanson, three is long, and it goes to Ford Washington. Apple Valley, well, three minutes left here. They just missed a few shots when they had a chance to uh, respond when that score was stuck at 58-50. They just couldn't find their shots. And we have a turnover on Hannah Wise. So Apple Valley, you know, not done yet. But I think that win against Jefferson showed that we're here to play and that record doesn't mean a thing. Sierra Ford Washington with the steal. That should just about do it for the Spartans. January stops, pops, no good. Chalk with the rebound. Finding Pipkins again. And Pipkins just quietly putting up 11 points. And Apple Valley will call timeout with 2.14 left. Yeah. Pipkins not the biggest score for Apple Valley, but just making the key baskets. Yeah, she's made several key baskets tonight, uh, and, and that's what they need. They're going to have to have her step up, uh, as well as uh, see if Scott can uh, find a little bit of her offense that she had last night here in the last uh, 
250 of the game uh, if Apple Valley is going to have a chance to come back and uh, win this game. So we'd like to quickly remind you we'll have uh, interviews with players of the game on both teams following the conclusion of this game. And if you want to purchase a DVD copy of this, just click the purchase DVD link at the top of the page and then send us your suggestions at the support suggestions link at the bottom of the page for comments and feedback. We'd like to thank GrandStadium.tv for providing an outlet to webcast these games and also the Hopkins Holiday Tournament games which are going on right now. I know a lot of folks will be eager to hear about the Osseo Hopkins score. Of course, you can catch that game right here on GrandStadium.tv when that is uploaded. Well, we've got that little girl with her Christmas hat on again. Uh, Santa Claus might be in the building. <laughs> and I, I'm certainly uh, guessing one of these two teams might get uh, their Christmas wish, which was to, to win a holiday tournament uh, and, and uh, hoist that uh, Richfield Girls Holiday Basketball Classic uh, trophy. And there's only 362 days left until Christmas, so uh, you want to get those gifts in early. January got pummeled. And she'll go to the line. And it's simply because Apple Valley knows they have to, to come back here. They've got to work, and so here comes that full court. Well, they have no choice at this point uh, with 2.10 left in the ball game. Unfortunately, January is probably the last player on Richfield that you want to foul. Even with all the free throws she's missed. <laughs> Even with all the free throws she's missed, Mike. <laughs> I got a feeling she's going to make the ones in the stretch. There are not many players who can miss a few free throws, miss a few shots, and you still want to avoid putting them to the line or giving them the ball in the clutch. Scott going to Pipkins, can't get the bounce. Shawk has the board, but Apple Valley has to work quickly. They're going to need to get a couple of three-point plays here if they're going to have a chance to come back uh, with under two minutes left. Shock gets bumped. Richfield did have a foul to give. And so there will be a non-shooting foul. Fouls on Anderson. Shock can't get rid of it. Looking for Scott. And just threw into traffic. Ford Washington was there. Really what it came down to was Rich Shield making that key run midway through the second. That's all it came down to. That really was the difference at this ball game. Wise for three, short, and Shock picks it up. Shock was blocked by January in terms of the pass. And you again, just like yesterday, Richfield still playing their defense. They're not letting the inside open and letting Apple Valley just get the easy twos. And it forces a turnover from Pipkins. You don't see too many heavy faces on Apple Valley's bench either. I think they know they got the win they were looking for. I know they would have loved to have upset Richfield, but I think they got that confidence boost yesterday with the Jefferson victory. Yeah, I think that was the you know one of the certainly the keys that they were looking for is to come in and, and win that first game, give yourself a chance to play for for a tournament championship, uh, as well as getting a chance to know that you can compete and beat uh, one of your conference foe. Scott draws a foul, or Scott gets a foul. That's her fourth. In January, will shoot more free throws with Richfield in the bonus. Yeah, she's only put up 13 points in this half. <laughs> yeah, down a little from the second half. I mean, where is that consistency? Come on. I mean, 14? I mean, come on. You put up 20 in the first half? Mike, she's still got a minute <laughs> left. You never know. <laughs> I bet, yeah, I better be careful. She might be listening to this, and all of a sudden, she gets a couple threes. Well, she gets a steal. And I don't know if Rich, uh, Apple Valley will be fouling here, but they are doing that full court. 
Wise runs in, picks up two more. That gives her 11, and so that will give Richfield three players finishing the game in double figures. Wise has had a nice tournament both last night and tonight. And Swanson, too long. January with the rebound, and that should do it. She should just run out the clock. And that's exactly what Richfield will do. They will move to 6-0 on the season, get back on the short list of top contenders in the Metro. Apple Valley will fall to 2-6, but nothing to hang their heads about. 72-55 is the final as Richfield defends their territory and will pick up the Richfield Holiday Classic Trophy. We'll know we'll have the trophy presentation shortly. And don't forget, we also have our players of the game to come up with us. It will be uh, Jessica January, of course, for Richfield, and we'll try to get a word in with Jordan Sammons of Apple Valley, who had 16 points before she was fouled out. So don't go anywhere. We're not done just yet. Mike Beaton here with Jordan Sammons, the player of the game from Apple Valley. Uh, well, finished in second here, but I think you showed that this Apple Valley team can compete with anybody in the South Suburban and anybody else in the state, even with their record at two and six. You proved that it was no indication of how good this Eagles team is. Yeah, we're strong. We're a young team, but we're coming together now. Now your coaching staff said that one thing that's really great about the Apple Valley team is how they stay together, how they've remained supportive of each other, and that really showed yesterday and that win over Bloomington Jefferson. And how big was that for your team, just to remind yourself that you can compete with the top dogs in South Suburban Conference? Uh, that was really big to come back from 11-0 start, um, to come back and hustle through everything and tie it at halftime and come out strong and come out with a win. And uh, what did you take tonight from Richfield that you'll be able to use as you uh, go on and continue that play and uh, try to set yourself up for a run later on in spring? Um, we'll take that everybody has good teams. January played awesome. Can't shut her down. She's a great basketball player. And we'll just have to work on our defense a little stronger, make it stronger for next week. Well, certainly watch out for the Apple Valley team. They could surprise a few folks. And uh, is there anybody you want to say hi to that might be watching online? Um, hi, Mom, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure your mom will be proud to hear that. Yeah. But uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. And, yep. uh, Congratulations on your second place finish, and who knows, we might see Apple Valley later on. Thank you. Jordan Sammons, Apple Valley's player of the game. And I'm here with one of Richfield's players of the game, Hannah Wise, who had a, you had a very nice tournament uh, here at your home court. And uh, what did it mean for you? Because coming into this tournament, only uh, one player was averaging double digits in scoring. And then uh, last night, you had a big performance yeah. uh, against Burnsville. It was just, it was great having everybody, well, having at least three girls tonight in double figures, you know, I don't know, winning our own tournament is just better because last year we didn't do so good, so it was great this year. Right, you lost in your opening game last year, and obviously it's a holiday tournament in December, so there's still a lot of games left yeah. to be played, and you start uh, Classic Suburban Conference play, but how does this set up the Richfield Spartans to take on the Classic Suburban foes where you've got Hill Murray waiting for you? We're gonna have lots of confidence going into every game. We're gonna, we're six and zero right now, so it's a lot of confidence. And what does this <laughs> tournament perhaps mean to you, I'm more than just you know winning the trophies and all that? Because Richfield is described as being a small town inside a big city, and so what does it mean to have a tournament where you get some of the big metro schools to come in and play here? Well, it shows that we're strong enough to beat them, and we can prove everybody wrong. Nobody thought we'd do that, so yeah. Now, I've been told that your grandmother watches all the games that you participate in. I don't know if you want to say hi to her and anybody else, but uh, I was warned that uh, to be careful of what to say to you for that reason. <laughs> yeah, hi, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and any uh, final thoughts, anything you'd like to say to the team or to um, the tournament organizers as uh, you take home the trophy this year? Well, thanks for running a great tournament this year, and we just played great. Good job to all of our girls.
Well, thank you and uh, congratulations. And thanks. who knows, we might see you in uh, postseason play come March. Yeah, thanks. Hannah Wise, one of Richfield's players of the game, will have our second player of the game shortly. Mike Pete in here with the second Richfield player of the game, Jessica January, who only put up 34 points tonight and put up 27 in the last game. Now, yesterday it took you a little while to get going, but your uh, teammates uh, stepped in for you. And so what does that mean? Because a lot of folks, when they look at the paper, they'd see your name first, but they may not recognize the support that you get from folks like Hannah Wise and Sierra Ford Washington and Brianne Guyton. Yeah, well, especially this tournament, um, it made it a lot easier for me as everyone else was, like, contributing and, you know, making shots, and that made it easier for me because, like, they couldn't, like, triple team me and stuff, you know what I mean? So it, it definitely took a lot of pressure off for me and let me, like, you know, do more of my things and focus on other things besides just scoring. And tonight was the opposite. You uh, <laughs> caught fire in the first half with yeah. 20 points, and then the other your other teammates stepped in later on, and then uh, you got the points when needed. So what did you take from this tournament uh, coming up big? Um, it really showed like that we're like a really we can be a really good team like when everyone is doing their like part we can be like really good you know I don't have to do everything or like Hannah doesn't have to do everything everyone everyone else is like contributing so you know I don't know I think we're gonna be good. What did you learn most about this Spartan team as you get ready to play classic suburban uh, conference opponents including Hill Murray who's one of the favorites in 3A? Um, I think that we're, we're better than last year as far as like everyone in it together and we definitely have a lot of confidence from winning these games. So I think us as Spartans, you know, when everyone is like shows up to play, we can do really good things. Now this is your second year uh, without uh, your older sister Pamela who's playing <laughs> in Division One basketball. And so what have you learned about the sport, maybe about yourself outside of it uh, now that uh, you get a chance to uh, take the court and be the only January representing <laughs> the Richfield uh, community um that basketball is really you have to use your teammates you know you can't win by yourself so you have to get everyone else involved even you know even though if i score a lot you know i try to get everyone else involved so that's what i learned yeah and right you scored a lot and i think one thing folks might not forget you also put up quite a few assists tonight yeah. as well and yeah. that really seems to be the rich field mantra is even if one player is putting up a ton of mm -hmm. points they're still not afraid to pass the ball around and yeah. uh, utilize any of their players at any point yeah and it was especially, you could especially see it to, like through this whole tournament, like everyone else. It's just so nice to see everyone else stepping up and taking shots and, you know, it was fun. And then what is the significance of having your own tournament? Uh, again, Richfield described as being a small town inside a big city just outside of Minneapolis. So what does it mean to have your own tournament when Hopkins and several other schools are hosting holiday tournaments around this time? Um, I guess it really shows that it doesn't matter, you know, how big the school is or like where you're from. Like, you know, anybody can win. Just like we showed this tournament, we took the tournament and we played bigger schools and stuff. You know, it doesn't matter. It's who shows up to play, and especially as a team. So. Well, I've been told you show up to play, whether it's on the court or in the classroom, and uh, <laughs> there's no doubt in our minds that you're going to have a very fine uh, <laughs> uh, career path ahead of you, whatever you choose. But uh, before you go, I want to ask, is there anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching? Um, <laughs> no. No? <laughs> you mean no? You mean all the support you get and you can't say hi to anybody? Hi, no, I'm everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, congratulations on the tournament win. Thank you. and. Uh, your point production tonight, and who knows, we might see you in March in the postseason. Yep, thank you. Jessica January, Richfield's second player of the game, and that will do it from here. For Tim Johnson and everyone here at Community Hoops, this is Mike Peden. So long from Richfield.